The evening had taken on an eerie stillness as I sat alone in our darkened living room, the soft glow of street lights casting long, distorted shadows on the walls. My heart pounded in my chest like a drumbeat of dread as I clutched the stack of love letters I had found earlier in the attic. The letters were written by Peggy's various lovers over the years, their passionate words etched onto paper, a damning testament to her infidelity. As I sifted through the pages, my fingers trembling, I couldn't help but overhear the muffled laughter and whispers from the backyard. I crept closer to the window, my heart in my throat, and peered through the blinds. There on the patio bathed in the soft glow of string lights, I saw Peggy. Her raven black hair cascaded over her shoulders, and her emerald green eyes sparkled with mischief. She was sitting close to Tom, my best friend's husband, their bodies leaning toward each other in a way that left no room for doubt. Their laughter was like a cruel melody that played on, and I realized with a sinking feeling that my life was unraveling before my eyes. I heard Peggy's voice, the one I had once believed to be sweet and gentle, rise above the rest. Tom, we can't keep doing this, she said, her words laced with desire. Tom chuckled softly. Peggy, you know I can't resist you. We'll find a way. Their dialogue struck me like a dagger through the heart and I couldn't tear my eyes away from the painful scene unfolding outside. It was the confirmation I had feared, the irrefutable evidence that Peggy was entangled in yet another affair, this time with a man who had been like a brother to me. The weight of the betrayal crushed me, and I staggered back from the window, clutching the love letters to my chest. It was a moment of reckoning, a moment that would set into motion a chain of events I never could have imagined. Frank Grimes, once a trusting husband, had just discovered the painful truth that would change his life forever. The morning after my discovery, I confronted Peggy about the love letters and the affair I had witnessed between her and Tom. She sighed heavily, her eyes avoiding my gaze as she took a seat across from me at the kitchen table. The tension in the room was palpable, and I needed answers. Peggy, I need you to explain, I implored, my voice trembling with a mix of anger and hurt. She hesitated for a moment, her fingers tracing the rim of her coffee cup, and then finally she spoke. Frank, I don't know where to begin, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Start from the beginning, I urged. She took a deep breath and began to recount her history of affairs. It all started when we were newlyweds, she admitted, her words heavy with regret. I had an affair with my tennis coach. It was a mistake, Frank, a stupid mistake. I clenched my jaw, trying to process the information. And after that, I asked my voice strained. Peggy continued, her gaze fixed on the table. There were others, Frank. Colleagues from work, an old college friend, and more. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The woman I had loved and trusted had led a secret life, a life filled with betrayal and deceit. It was as if a curtain had been pulled back, revealing a side of Peggy I had never known. And Tom? I asked, the name leaving a bitter taste in my mouth. Peggy's eyes welled up with tears, and she finally met my gaze. Tom was the latest, Frank, she admitted, her voice cracking. I never meant for any of this to happen. It's just, it was just sex, Frank. I felt a surge of anger and despair wash over me. Just sex. I repeated, unable to hide the hurt in my voice. Peggy reached out to touch my hand, but I pulled away. Frank, I'm so sorry, she said, her voice filled with genuine remorse. I never wanted to hurt you. I stared at her, my emotions a swirling mix of anger, betrayal, and heartbreak. Peggy's confession had opened a Pandora's box of pain, and I knew that there was no going back. The woman I had loved had a history of affairs that stretched back over a decade, and our marriage hung in the balance. The ride back from dropping our daughter at university was a suffocating experience. The weight of Peggy's confession and her admission of her history of affairs hung heavily in the air, casting a pall over our once happy family. We had always been so proud of our daughter, and now she was away, blissfully unaware of the storm that was brewing at home. As we pulled into the driveway of our suburban home, the silence between us was deafening. The tension was palpable, a thick fog of unspoken words that clung to the air. I knew I couldn't let this fester any longer and as we stepped out of the car, I turned to face Peggy. We need to talk, Peggy, I said, my voice resolute but tinged with sadness. 
Peggy nodded, her expression resigned. She knew that this confrontation had been a long time coming, and she was prepared to leave me for Tom. But I couldn't let her escape without facing the consequences of her betrayal. Inside our home, we made our way to the living room, the familiar surroundings now suffused with an air of unease. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the difficult conversation ahead. Peggy sat down on the couch, her eyes downcast, her hands folded in her lap. I stood in front of her, struggling to find the right words to express the hurt and anger that had been building inside me. I can't believe you would do this to us, I began, my voice quivering with emotion, to our family. Peggy's gaze remained fixed on the floor and she remained silent. I pressed on, my frustration mounting. How could you, Peggy? How could you betray me like this? Finally, she looked up, tears glistening in her eyes. I never meant for any of this to happen, Frank, she said, her voice trembling. I never wanted to hurt you or our daughter. I clenched my fists, struggling to control my anger. But you did hurt us, Peggy. You've torn our family apart. Peggy's tears flowed freely now, and she reached out to touch my arm. Frank, please, let's try to work through this. We can go to counseling, we can. I pulled away from her touch, my heart heavy with betrayal. I don't know if I can ever trust you again, Peggy. I admitted, my voice breaking. As the words hung in the air, I knew that our confrontation was just the beginning of a long and painful journey. Our once happy home had become a battleground, and the future of our family hung in the balance. The confrontation in our living room continued, the air heavy with tension and unspoken words. Peggy sat on the couch, her tear-filled eyes locked onto mine, a mixture of guilt and regret etched across her face. I had confronted her about her history of affairs, and now it was time to delve into the painful details of her infidelity. Peggy, I need to know everything I said, my voice steady but laced with hurt. Tell me about your affairs. Tell me about Tom. Peggy took a deep breath, her shoulders trembling, and began to speak. Frank, I never wanted to hurt you, she admitted, her voice quivering. But it started with my tennis coach when we were newlyweds. It was a mistake, a moment of weakness. I listened in silence as Peggy recounted the affairs that had followed, her words cutting through me like a knife. Colleagues from work, an old college friend, and others had all been a part of her secret life. The pain of betrayal ran deep, and I struggled to process the extent of her deception. And then there's Tom, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. Peggy's gaze fell, and she nodded. Tom was the latest, she confessed. I never meant for any of this to happen, Frank. It was just, it was just sex. I thought I could keep it hidden, but I can't deny it anymore. My anger and despair boiled over, and I couldn't help but lash out. Just sex. I repeated, my voice filled with bitterness. You've destroyed our marriage for just sex. Peggy reached out to touch my hand, her eyes pleading for understanding. Frank, I'm so sorry, she said, her voice choked with emotion. I never wanted to hurt you or our daughter. Please, let's find a way to work through this. I pulled my hand away from her touch, my heart heavy with betrayal. I don't know if I can ever trust you again, Peggy. I admitted, my voice breaking. Peggy's tears flowed freely now, and she buried her face in her hands. I understand, she sobbed. I just hope someday you can find it in your heart to forgive me. As Peggy's confession and intentions hung in the air, I knew that our marriage had reached a crossroads. The future was uncertain, and the pain of her betrayal had left scars that may never fully heal. In the days following my confrontation with Peggy and her confession of her affairs, I retreated into a cold and calculating silence. The shock of her betrayal still weighed heavily on my heart, but I had a revelation of my own to reveal. I needed Peggy to understand that I hadn't been passive all these years, that I too had a secret. One evening, as Peggy sat alone in the dimly lit living room, I decided it was time to reveal the extent of my knowledge. I took a seat across from her, my eyes locked onto hers with an intensity that made her uneasy. Peggy, I began, my voice low and steady, there's something you need to know. Peggy looked at me with a mixture of curiosity and apprehension. What is it, Frank? I took a deep breath, feeling the weight of my revelation. I've been aware of your affairs from the very beginning. 
I admitted, my words hanging heavily in the air. I've been watching, observing, and manipulating situations to end your relationships without ever directly confronting you. Peggy's eyes widened in shock, and her voice trembled as she spoke. You, you knew all along? I nodded, my expression unyielding. Yes, Peggy. I knew about each affair, every secret meeting, every lie. Peggy seemed to be struggling to find words, her face growing pale with realization. Why didn't you confront me sooner? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. A bitter smile crossed my lips. I wanted you to feel the pain, Peggy. I said, my voice dripping with resentment. I wanted you to understand the consequences of your actions. Peggy's eyes welled up with tears, and she looked down at her hands, unable to meet my gaze. Frank, I... I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say, I replied coldly. You made your choices, Peggy, and now you have to live with the consequences. As the weight of my revelation sank in, I could see the realization dawning in Peggy's eyes. The tables had turned, and she now understood the depths of my deception and manipulation. Our marriage had become a battlefield and I was determined to make Peggy feel the pain I had endured for so long. The revelation of my long-term plan had left Peggy in a state of shock and confusion. She sat in the dimly lit living room, her eyes filled with a mix of disbelief and fear. The silence between us was oppressive, broken only by the faint hum of the ceiling fan. Peggy, I finally spoke, my voice cold and calculating. There's something else you should know. Peggy looked up at me her face pale and trembling. What now, Frank? She asked, her voice barely more than a whisper. I leaned in closer, my eyes locked onto hers. I have a story to tell you. I began, my voice low and ominous. A story that you won't believe. Peggy's brow furrowed in confusion, but she remained silent, waiting for me to continue. I began to weave a tale a story so horrifying and disturbing that it sent shivers down Peggy's spine. I insinuated that I had been exacting a dark and twisted revenge on her, a revenge that involved feeding her the remains of her past lovers. The details were gruesome, the imagery vivid, and I watched as Peggy's face contorted with terror. You're lying, Peggy stammered, her voice shaking. You can't be serious. I maintained my cold composure, refusing to break character. Oh, but I am serious, Peggy, I said, my voice dripping with malice. You've been eating the flesh of the men you betrayed. Peggy recoiled in horror, her eyes filled with tears. Frank, please, stop this. It's sick. I leaned in even closer, my voice a sinister whisper. You see, Peggy, I wanted you to know what it feels like to be trapped, to be consumed by fear and guilt, to feel the same kind of pain you've inflicted on me. Tears streamed down Peggy's face, and she looked as if she were on the verge of a breakdown. Frank, I'm so sorry for what I've done, she sobbed. Please, let's find a way to make things right. I pulled away, my satisfaction evident in my demeanor. It's too late for that, Peggy, I said, my tone chillingly final. I have someone here to escort you away, to be with Tom. Peggy's eyes widened in alarm as two stern-looking individuals entered the room. She was escorted away her cries echoing through the house, leaving behind a trail of devastation. As Peggy's departure marked the end of a dark and twisted chapter in our lives, I couldn't help but revel in the satisfaction of my revenge, even as I knew that the true horrors were yet to come. The days that followed Peggy's departure were filled with an eerie stillness, a haunting silence that hung over our home. The truth of my dark revenge scheme had driven Peggy away leaving me alone to grapple with the consequences of my actions. I knew that my life would never be the same again, and the events that transpired in the final chapter of our story would only solidify that fact. One evening, as I sat alone in our living room, the weight of what I had done bore down on me like a heavy shroud. My phone buzzed with a text message, and I picked it up to see a message from Peggy. I can't live with what I know, the message read. I need to talk. Please, Frank. I hesitated for a moment, torn between anger and a lingering sense of guilt. Finally, I replied, fine, meet me at the old quarry tonight. The old quarry had always been a place of isolation, a desolate and foreboding location where few ventured. It was there that Peggy and I would have our final reckoning. 
As I arrived at the quarry, the moon hung low in the sky, casting an eerie glow over the barren landscape. Peggy was already there, her face pale and tear-streaked. Frank, we need to talk, she said, her voice trembling. I nodded, my expression unyielding. What do you want to say, Peggy? Peggy took a deep breath, her eyes filled with sadness and regret. I can't live with the guilt, Frank, she admitted. I know what I did was wrong, and I'm willing to accept the consequences. I watched her closely, my emotions conflicted. What do you mean, accept the consequences? Peggy's gaze fell to the ground, and she spoke in a hushed voice. I've already confessed everything to the police, she confessed. I told them about your revenge, about the story you told me. They're on their way here now. My heart sank, and a sense of dread washed over me. What have you done, Peggy? I asked, my voice filled with disbelief. Peggy looked up at me, tears in her eyes. I couldn't live with the darkness any more, Frank, she said. I had to come clean. As we stood there, the distant sound of sirens growing louder, I realized that our story had taken a final, devastating turn. Peggy and I were both trapped in a web of our own making, our lives irreparably damaged by the choices we had made. In the end, the old quarry became a symbol of our despair, a place where our secrets had been laid bare and our lives had unraveled completely. There was no escaping the final outcome, no way to undo the damage that had been done. Our story had come to a chilling and irreversible end, leaving us both to face the consequences of our actions. 